what are we learning today? Uh, we are focusing on two main points. The first one, it's about filters that I know you saw yesterday in Milagro session that you uh, can hide and show filters globally or in a specific program or data set. And then the second point, it's going to be the offline analytics that we can have analytics in TIs, home programs, and data sets. And we're going to learn how to configure them. And we're also going to learn how I, are they rendered in the Android app, how can you group them, and also how can you use the filters for the analytics. So this is a really small glossary. Um, I'm going to be using the word visualization a lot. So every time I use that word, I mean any chart, as you can see on the slide, column, bar chart, line chart, radar chart, um, or a table that you create on uh, the data visualizer um, app in the server. So let's start with the filters. Uh, we use filters to, we can customize filters so you can hide or show the different filters that you use on the Android app in the program or in a data set or in home. And we can also uh, customize the way we see the completion percentage spinner, spinner that, we, that we use on the event forms. Let's see it here on the Android settings. Uh, same as yesterday, you can search the app through this menu. You can either scroll and click or you can search by typing the name. Once you're here, uh, you won't be able to change anything, uh, but there are demo servers uh, that you can use if you want to play around with this. So the filters, we are going to find them on this appearance section. And again, we have three uh, possible options, home screen, program, and data set. If I go here, if I click here, you'll see that we have four different uh, filters. We have date, organization unit, sync status, and assigned to me. They are, they are all checked. That means that if I go to my device, which I'm going to do now, and if I go here to filters, I'm going to be able to see the four of them. There is one possibility that even if you check the organization unit here, you won't be able to see that on the device. Why would this happen? If my user only has access to one org unit, then it's going to be hidden automatically. Why? Because I cannot filter using different org units because I only have access to one. So even though you select here the filter of organization unit, if your user only have one org unit um, assigned, then this filter is going to disappear. Okay, if I want to change any of this, if I don't want to see date, for example, then I just need to uh, click here just to unselect the, the filter. And it's very important that you always save here. If you don't save and let's say I move to a different uh, section, uh, then the changes won't be saved, okay? So for program and for data set, because they both work the same, we have two sections. We have the global settings, uh, and then we have the specific settings. In this case, you see for the global, I'm showing everything, showing the percentage, the completion percentage in the events, we're showing all the eight filters that we have available. But then in my program, which is 006, you'll see, <clears throat> sorry, I only have three main filters. I have enrollment date, event date, and follow up. And I don't want to show the percentage, the completion percentage. So let's see it on the app. If I go to my program, which is this one, and I click here, you'll see I only have event date, which is the event date here, uh, the case registration, which is the enrollment date, and then I have the follow up, which is this one. And about the completion percentage, I can see that on the event. And you'll see I don't have any percentage here displaying um, the completion. Okay. So let's go to another program, not in a specific one in general, which could be this one. 
and you'll see that I have here all the eight filters because that's what I said here um, in the global, sorry, in the global settings. And then if I enter any TI, I should be able to see the completion percentage here because I have it selected here. Okay. That's it about filters. Uh, with data sets, it is exactly the same. We have a global settings and then we have an, a specific one. Now let's talk about the offline analytics. As I was mentioning, uh, we can have analytics on the TI dashboard, on the home, on programs and on data sets. We calculate uh, those analytics using the local data. What does that mean? That when you log in or when you are um, using the data synchronization, you won't be pulling out um, information or data from the server. So for example, if you uh, manage to have only five TIs and only 10 events in your device, then that's the only information that is going to be showing on that specific analytic, okay? And for example, if you delete your local data, deleting your local data here, let me show you. If you delete your local data, then the, uh, the charts or tables will be empty. And lastly, sorry, uh, you'll see that you can only configure these uh, analytics using the Android settings web app. Again, the visualization you created on the data visualizer. That means the charts, the, the tables, the, whatever you want to display, you create it uh, in the data visualizer. But then to configure it, to be showing that analytic in the Android device, you need to do it using the Android settings web app. Okay, so let's start with TI analytics. And let me just show you here we are moving from appearance and we are moving to analytics. And then we have the four options. We have TI, home program and data set. Let's start with TI analytics. So what is the purpose of, of this? We are trying to measure or to evaluate uh, a data element, different uh, values of a data element in a period of time. So for that, well, we could use data elements or we could use program indicators. But for that, we need uh, two main requirements. The first one is that the data element must be a numeric value type. And the second one is that it must be in a repeatable program stage. Why do we need to have a repeatable program stage? Uh, because we need to see different values in different periods of time. So let's say you have it, uh, weekly periods and you are taking temperature or you are measuring um, weight, for example, then you could see how the weight changes through the different uh, weeks or days. Depends how you are collecting your data. And same for the program indicators. Uh, the formula must contain a data element that, that is in a repeatable stage. So for TI analytics, we have five different uh, visualization types. We can have bar, line, pivot, single, and the WHO nutrition one. So for the first four, they are uh, created the same way. I'm going to show you step-by-step. Step. And then for the WHO, there's a bit different. So I'm going to show that next. Okay, so for the first four, what you're going to do to create this TI analytic. You're going to first, click on add TI. Let me just move here real quick so you can see, add TI analytics. Then uh, there's a pop-up message that it's a dialog box that it's gonna set. Select your program and select the program stage. And in the program stage, it's only going to be showing the ones that are repeatable because that's a requirement to create um, this type of charts. Once you have chosen the program and the stage, you're going to uh, type a title for that chart and you could add a short name. This is optional. So if you don't want to add a short name, you don't have to. Uh, the first step is to choose the visualization and the period type. As you could see, we have bar, line, pivot, and single values. Um, in this case, in this example, I'm using a line chart. 
and then you choose a period type, which can be daily, yearly, weekly. You can see that on the Android settings. And finally, you're going to select the visualization element, what you want to be display, what you want to display on that particular chart. So you have two or three options, I, I think. We have data element, we have program indicator, and we have attributes. And then you choose the element. In this case, I chose a data element and I'm going to, the data element that I'm choosing is height. Okay, now let's see how to create a WHO. Um, as I was mentioning, through the Android settings, it's possible to create WHO uh, C-score charts, uh, which are used basically to assess growth considering a child's age and measurements. So the first steps are the same. I choose a program in the stage and add a title to that particular um, chart. Then I choose the visualization type, which I'm choosing in this case, the WHO nutrition. And then uh, I need to select the type. So we have three possible types and you could check this uh, in the WHO page. They have also all these charts available so you can compare. Uh, between the app and, and, and the WHO standard. And you'll see that we have height for age, weight for age, or in case you're not collecting age or you don't know the age of the child, then you're going to use the weight and height. The first step is to select gender attributes. So it is mandatory to have an attribute uh, that collect the gender, okay? And you add the title for female and you add the title for male. And finally, you choose the X and the Y's axis elements. And for the horizontal one, we're using, I'm using this example here. So we're using height and for the Y, we're using weight. So how is this display on the app? Here, as you can see on my slides, the first one, we, are, we were measuring the height and we were selecting a line chart. So that's why we can see, um, this is the first um, measurement and this is the second measurement. And it's, if I have more, then it's going to be graph here. And then the second one, which is a WHO nutrition, you can see the C-score. Okay, now let's go to the other three, which are home, program, and data set. The three are configuring, um, you can configure them uh, using the same steps. There are just a few changes between one and another. In the following slides, let me just show you real quick. Those three, home, program, and data set, I just left a step-by-step -step that you can follow later. Uh, I'm just going to show the main steps that we have, okay? So for the, the, the first step is that you select the program or the data set. Or if you're in home, then you omit this uh, step because you're directly just selecting the visualization. The second step is, again, selecting the visualization. The Android Settings app filter the list of visualizations that shows uh, that you can select. And the main filters are this. First, we are only supporting column, line, pie, pivot table, single value, and radar charts. We only support relative periods. So if you, uh, for example, said in your um, bar chart that you only want to see year 2021, then your visualization will not be displayed on that list. So we only have relative periods, then row dimensions, we have maximum of one, column maximum of two, and then the organization units, you need to have access to at least one org unit level, which are those three, okay? So going back to the steps, uh, we, we then select an alternative title, which is optional. That means that if you don't write that title, then the app automatically is going to be displaying the chart uh, name or the table name. Finally, you could uh, group, you could group uh, different charts or uh, you can just leave them just in one screen, all of them. And finally, save. It is important to save again. Let's see that on the Android settings app. Let's go to home. In home, as you can see here, I have 
two different groups. I have the COVID-19 aggregate weekly surveillance and inside I have two different charts. And in here, the other group is a COVID-19 cumulative tests and cases. And I just have one chart. I could use the delete group or delete just to delete one specific chart. So let's add a new one. I'm not going to save it, but for you to see the first step, as I was mentioning, was to select um, a chart. So this list is already filtered, OK? So all of these charts uh, are, are uh, it's going to be able to display in the Android app. What happened, this is important, what happened if I select it and I configure it, but then I made a change um, in, the, in the chart. Let's say first I have relative periods and, I, and now I have fixed periods. Then um, here is not going to be deleted, but in the Android app, the, you're not going to be able to see the, the chart or, or the table. Okay, so we already select the visualization item, then we could choose a title. Again, this is optional. And then if we unselect this, we are saying we don't want to use a group. If we select it, we want to use a group and we have two options. We can create a new group, which basically you only have to type the name of the new group, or we can select a created group, which in my case, as I was saying, uh, I had already two, two groups. Okay, and below we have the visualization user test, which basically this is a tool that helps you to know if a particular user will be able to see uh, the chart or not based on the sharings. So for example, let, let's say I want to use my, I want to see if my user will be able to see this chart. So I run the test and it said, yes, you can, that user can visualize that particular visualization. This is not mandatory to do. It's just a tool that will help you to know if the user can or cannot visualize a particular chart or table. Okay, then once you finish, you're going to click here on add home. I'm not going to do it, but you can click here. And uh, then you have to save, okay? So for programs and for data sets, the steps are the same. You click here in data visualization, you select, in this case, you select a data, a data set in the program. You will also be selecting the program first and then the steps are the same. You select a particular uh, visualization, add a title or not, add a group or not, and you could uh, use the user test as well. Let's see this on the Android app. So for home, I was saying I have two groups. How can you see the groups? You see it right here at the top bar. And I have two different charts, new confirmed cases and case recovery and fatality rates. Both are weekly, but uh, you could add whatever type of a chart or table that you need. Doesn't need to be, um, with the same uh, period or with the same units, okay? And then we have the second, uh, the second group, which I can see only one chart. The, only, the other one, let me go back to the data set. The other one was in a data set. You can find this uh, in the analytics tab as well, here analytics. And you will see, this is not a group. This is just my, um, my my rendering so i'm going to be this the app is going to be displaying the one chart the only chart that i have here okay so what can i do in these charts uh, you can uh, select just to see maybe you cannot see it on my screen but i can see it on my device you can select that particular bar or line chart if i go back to home let me just go back real quick you can select a different period so i can be sure on what specific week was this taken and what was the, the value. I could also zoom in and zoom out also horizontally through dates. You can 
do this. And also for bar charts, line charts, and single values, you can also change it through a different type of visualization. For example, by default, this is a line chart, but I could change it and see it as a bar chart here. Or I could change it and see it as a table. Or as a value, which will be showing um, the last value for each, because these are program indicators. And for the radar charts and pie charts, you can only change it to tables. You cannot change a radar or a pie chart to um, line or bar. Okay, let's go back here. As I was saying about the groups, uh, groups will be displayed as a button here at the top of the bar of the analytics screen. You can create as many groups as you need and there is no limit of charts per group. So if you want to add 50 charts, then go ahead and add 50 charts. These are some examples of visualizations that you could have, radar charts, pie charts, and so on. And finally, we have the filters. So it is possible to use two types of filters in analytics. We could uh, use periods and we could use org units. So let me show you how this works. For example, here, let me go through to this one. I have it, uh, I have this bar chart and it, it is yearly, okay? So I want to change it and I want to change it to, I don't know, weekly. And I'm going to choose the last four weeks. It's going to ask me, do you want to include the current period? Because I said last four weeks, right? So this week will be not counting. So I could say yes or no, whatever I want. Let's say, yes, I want to include it. So it's going to be showing me this week, which is the 14 uh, to the 20. And then it's going to be showing the other four weeks before this one. And then again, you can click on it. You can click also here down below. So you can see a particular um, bar or indicator. And if I want to remove this um, filter, then I just go click here and then reset. I could also as well filter by org unit. I could use the all that I have available or select a particular one. For example, if I select this one, I know there's no information there. So you see, it will be it will be not displaying any information. Okay, here you could see also uh, how does filter work. And finally, uh, I have four different helpful documentation for you. Let me just open it just to show it here. This is a link uh, for the manual the, in the DHIS2 documentation that you will find more information about what we learned today, uh, types, filters, how you can use the Android settings web app, how it's rendered on the Android app. We have the Android settings configuration here in the part of analytics. You'll find step-by-step -step how to create the different uh, analytics, yeah. Then we have a Q&A, a short Q&A. Well, you, you'll find um, helpful information about what is downloading in the data, what type of charts do we support, um, the restrictions of the Android app, etc. Okay, and finally, and, and this is a really important documentation, uh, those are the limitations of what we can render or not in the Android app. So an easy way to read this is everything that is in green, we are supporting it and everything that is in gray, we're not. You can check this out um, later. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to change to the exercise. Let me just show you what you need to do. Give me one second. Uh, 
Okay, so for the exercise, we're doing two tasks. The first one, it's about TEI analytics. And in this program, the COVID-19 contact registration and follow-up, I know you have created your TI and with your photo and probably coordinates. So go back to your TI or, or create a new one if you want to. And then you have to add five to 10 follow-up events. And what are we doing? We are evaluating uh the temperature we want to see the evolution of the temperature so go to the follow-up stage and then create five to ten follow-up events and add values to the temperature just a tip uh remember to create each event with different dates because if not you're only going to be seeing uh one line uh vertically probably in the same period so we want to see different periods of time and you go check the temperature evolution on the TI uh, chart. It should look something like this. Let me show you real quick. Here, this, okay? You're going to create a follow-up event and then you're going to be displaying this chart here. Okay, then the second task is in home analytics. So for the it's going to be used seeing the data set that we have, the COVID-19 aggregate weekly surveillance. And what are you going to do? You're, if you don't have any information, then you're going to add four different periods to that data set, uh, which is a weekly data set of at least two different months, okay? Then you're going to uh, go to analytics tab on the home screen, not in the data set on the home screen. And then you're going to display this chart and you're going to display it as a line chart. And secondly, you're going to uh, make a filter instead of having a yearly period, which I think this um, chart has, you're going to change it to a monthly period filter. So, you're going to submit three screenshots. One of your device showing the temperature evolution and the other two are the same chart, but the first uh, screenshot is going to be the chart as a line chart. And the second one, it's going to be the chart filtered by a monthly period. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask here in some more Slack and I will answer them.